One of the last times I went downtown and like it, I wasn't even drunk. I was I was being the sober driver. I yeah. took my cousin out. I got jumped by a bunch of people. <laughs> I got jumped for like 15 minutes. I, I was actually just got shoulder surgery, so I was in a sling, and I pretty much got swung on just being in the wrong place, wrong time. Just like you, man. Yeah, I, I turned down the wrong block. Somebody pointed at me, and I was like, is he pointing at me? I'm like, <laughs> Probably not. And then next thing I'm getting punched in the face. I'm like, oh, shit. Welcome, welcome, welcome to another episode of the Bruno's podcast. I'm super excited, guys. This has been a long-awaited podcast. We've we've tried to plan it like three, four times, <laughs> but but your guys gotten superstar on me lately. Uh, here on the pod, I have Brandon Royval. So Brandon is one of the best fighters in the game right now. Um, he's the number four ranked flyweight in the UFC, uh, and he's probably one of the most entertaining fighters just in general to watch uh so brandon thanks for coming on man thanks i appreciate you uh having me man it has yeah. been a minute the the denver boys got to get together you know what i'm saying yeah straight up i thought uh i thought you lived in do you, do you live in colorado springs or so i do live in springs i was training at factory x for a bit i yeah. think uh when i first got there you had like just wanted your lfa stuff yeah so it's just kind of cool to see you know the trajectory and yeah. then covid hit and it was you know, a, a big change for all of us, I think. Yeah, and it was like I, I walked in at such like a, like a not like a lucky month, but like yeah. I walked in and was able to face number ten, so it was just like a quick rise for me. So yeah, bro. Yeah, that was like all in a matter of like two and a half years, so it was really cool. And uh, yeah, man. I, and also, I just did not know you're like I'm like I live five minutes away from here. Five Factor X is like five yeah. minutes away from here. So yeah. Like, I thought I was gonna have to go up to Colorado Springs and it's yeah, like, no, I bro. Live, I <laughs> Let me just not uh, entertain the combo. No, I do have a studio in uh in Springs in my basement. Um, but you know, I, I started renting out the space here because it's just so much more convenient, you know. All all my friends, all my family, like everybody's in Denver. Yeah. I'm just the guy that lives in Springs, you know, an hour away. Yeah, Springs is like a beautiful place. And like since i I told you I've been smoking weed and we smoked yeah. a little bit before this too. We're in this like eighties room. I'm like Yeah. yeah. So it's like this is a good choice. I, I yeah, like your location. Bro. This is like a, It's a good vibe, huh? Yeah, yeah. I don't know who designs this place, but they killed it. And who yeah. made that song too, by the way? Bro, so that's V Wills. Uh he's an artist, used to be out of Springs. Uh now he lives in like Nashville, Tennessee, and he makes music and yeah. he like ghost rides for a lot of people. But his songs are fire, bro. And he made me that intro. Yeah. Um you had They Call Him AP on, on yeah, last like bro. last week. Bro, yeah. that's like one of my favorite ar favorite artists. Really, bro. Yeah. We gotta connect y'all. He's super chill. Yeah, yeah. I always go yeah. I always try to go to his concerts like yeah. when he's local or whatever it yeah, is. Bro. But uh yeah, he's one of the like He's one of the best lyric like lyricists. In Bro, Denver I had this dude that. freestyling right there, Damn. just in my ears, like, and I was just picking beats because yeah. I was like, "Fuck it!" Like that, that's what I would do, yeah. you know? Like, let me just throw some beats, and this dude went off, bro, yeah. went off. And it's not like one of your friends like rapping all drunk and all yeah. that, like, barely rhyming words, dog and hog bro, and yes, all that bro. shit. Like your your boy used to be, you know, I used to freestyle quite a bit just in the college days. You yeah. know, I think we all do just smoking with the boys, freestyling. Uh, and I used to call myself Bruno Bars. Like, oh, that's that just, that's instead of, like, Bruno Mars. <laughs> that's a, I think the Brunos, I was like, dang, yeah, that's a nice bro. little play on play on words right yeah, there. Yeah, bro. Did you see I got the username, too? Oh, Your right. boy came in clutch. Yeah, I was able to, I bought it off a kid. Oh, just really? Just random guy that had Bruno, so. Hell yeah. Bro. Your boy copped it. Uh, did you ever freestyle? Were, were you, like, a <laughs> no, freestyler? No, I, I, have, I had uh, two friends that are pretty talented, and uh, yeah. and uh, also Larry, he's, like, uh, he's, he's, like, I kind of like to think AP is like a little more hip hop too, because yeah. it just flows like real stuff and all yeah. that stuff, like old school shit. Kinda. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And yeah. that's what also is just like, um, like real hip hop. They, they do a really good job. And uh, yeah. yeah, man, it's just it's like unfortunate because like I don't I don't feel like that's the music that like that gets enough hype. Yeah, it's not it. mainstream yeah. anymore. Yeah, yeah, yeah. People now everything excited. has to be like catchy, you know, short enough for like a TikTok. Yeah, or like long. You, you know what I'm saying? It has to be like those quick little bars that people can make content to. Yeah. It almost like needs to be a part of a moment, you know? Yeah, straight up. But, but sometimes that the gangster shit's like what I'm oh, fucking yeah. with. Oh, me too. That's or a, any Drake. Are you a Drake fan at all or no? Uh, a little bit. Yeah. I, I'm not, I don't like, I'm sure I've listened or heard parts yeah. of the new album, but like I didn't go out of my way to go listen to him at okay. all. Okay. What I about kinda, like J. Cole? Yeah, I love J. Cole. Yeah. J. Cole's my favorite, probably yes. my favorite. I've seen him in concert like three times. So. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I was lucky enough Dude, to Dude, I him. went to the Born Sinner concert. Yeah. Was um, that at the Pep Center? No, no, it wasn't even that big yet. It was oh, at okay. like the Denver Convention Center. And uh, 
it was like way back in the day like yeah. you know he he wasn't even like pop and pop and like that but it's just so crazy to see and then going back to this like off season concert or something you know it's just He's he's got bars, bro. Yeah, yeah. I feel like I'm learning when I'm like listening to it. Yeah, like, oh, that's, that's I feel like uh, J Cole has like two songs that are like I'm like, damn, that song was like written to me specifically. <laughs> so it's like uh, when someone talks real, I'm like, I I, I I don't know enough about music yeah. to like like pick apart beats and stuff. Right. So it's like I feel like some people listen to the beats heavier, but like I'm huge on lyrics. So yes, it's like when bro. J Cole or like some dude like they call him AP yeah. or Old Solera when they when they rap, I'm like. This yeah, is what you're I want to Yeah, yeah. This you're embodying it. Almost. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Or even like, even like with gangster rap too. It's like yeah. I was kind of like embarrassed. <laughs> I was embarrassed when the Spotify came out and it says like all your top plays and stuff. It's like all gangster rap, and I'm like, damn. Like I guess I was just going through when you go through. Fight you're just camp, feeding your mind. Yeah, you're <laughs> just like I'm gonna kill this mother. Yeah, yeah. You know? I'm listening about selling crack, shooting up, <laughs> <laughs> shooting up people, all that Not stuff. Not even listening. You're like spitting. You're yeah. like, yeah, sell the crack. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's well, awesome. Well, I'm driving. Uh, well, I'm driving under the speed limit, yeah, following right. all the laws. <laughs> Put my blinker on and all this shit. I'm like, I'm not yeah, this. Bro. I'm not this hard to be listening to this song yeah. right now. Which is funny because it's like that's probably you probably are hard enough to listen to it from like that perspective because yeah. it's like, you know, yeah. UFC is the craziest shit in the world, bro. Yeah. It's literally like the toughest thing you could possibly do. Like, no weapons. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Nothing. Just you and the guy. You know what I'm yeah. saying? Yeah. Yesterday we had a uh, we had four guys fighting and like pretty much and like I I feel it sometimes when I fight or like when yeah. I'm about to fight, but uh, especially when I corner, I'm like, what the hell am I doing right now? I'm like, yeah. prepare. I'm in this dude's face. I'm like, go fucking get in his face. Yeah, go knock bro. him out. Let's go fucking make him pay. Let's make yeah. him pay the whole time. And then I'm like, who am I? I'm like, yeah. I'm a fucking. And that was off the dome. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Just I'm saying a bunch of savage shit, and I'm like. What have I gotten myself into? Yeah. Man? Like, this is. I have wild. this theory, bro. Okay. So, like, you know, when we watch UFC, and I think that's why it's the fastest growing sport, the biggest, like, it's going to be the biggest sport, no doubt. Um, because there's something so, like, primal in just watching, like, two fucking, like, sharpened fighters just go yeah. at it. it. Like, that's as old as time, you know? That's as old as, like, the the G greek days like the roman days like this dude's fighting a lion down there or something yeah you know? yeah exactly and i was watching it was like some little kid uh our kids program at, at factor x and yeah. it was like it was some little kid he was going against a big kid and he's getting like he was getting dominated man yeah. the kid was starting to choke him but he would like somehow find a way out yeah. you know and all that stuff and it's like i think parents put their kids into sports because it's like you know you learn to not quit you learn all these little valuable right. lessons but there's like no more important like or there's no more like of that in fight than in yeah, fighting and it's yeah. like we had we had two guys that were like uh last night in, in deep shit like yeah. uh we had luis grule which is like he grew up right yeah bro here. i know luis so yeah. he wrestled at uh sheridan. adams mine sheridan oh, okay, yeah. i wrestled with him in high school oh, um really? so yeah i've known him a while because i was uh i wrestled at mesa colorado mesa yeah. so i was like a d2 all-american and he was really tough and we were always dual in school so i, I know uh, luis jacoby that's how i know jacoby oh do you know a kid named tony Pena? Tony Pena, that sounds so familiar. Yeah, he, he was the only kid at our school that won, like, every... Oh, I do? I remember the name, bro. Yeah, I remember yeah. the name, yeah. I he, don't know him in person, no. He was cold with it, though. He would, like... I've, I've never seen, Yeah, like, he was nice back in the he, day. He would shake his leg at people, and then when they go yeah. shoot stuff, I'm all dirty, and, like, he would do a bunch of cool stuff. You see a right? lot of crazy shit in high school wrestling, especially. Yeah. Um, and then you get to the college level, too, bro, and guys are just, like, crazy good, Yeah. You know? Um, so that's why even with fighting, like I know I've never fought, but I like, there is, it's like the same brotherhood that I had with like my wrestlers friends, you know, that's like the same vibe, same jokes, like same humor, yeah. also like same mentality, you know? Um, so it's just fun to watch, bro. I love coming in and training with, with all you guys, you know, every time I get in the gym, it's really fun. Yeah. But uh, did you have a wrestling background at all? Or not, no? not at all. I started doing uh, jujitsu when I was sixteen, though. Yeah. Jujitsu and kickboxing. So yeah. like, I pretty much just started in the MMA world, yeah. but uh, no wrestling background. And it's like I, I kind of ignored wrestling until I got to Factory X, and then I yeah. started training with um, uh, with Joe Warren. And yeah, I couldn't ignore wrestling. <laughs> wrestling was in my face every two seconds. So I was like. I, I had to learn a little bit, and then uh, I guess I've just been getting better through the years. But I, I yeah. wish it's something that it's like if I ever have a kid, I'd put him right through. And yeah, all that stuff, dude. You know? Well, it teaches you a lot. I think any individual sport, you know, because at least this is how it was for me. I think back to my matches, right? And I like never really feel like the opponent himself was there. It was almost like 
I don't think back to the situations. I think back to what I was thinking in the situation, yeah. you know? So it's like, oh, like, just reactions. You you get what I'm saying? So yeah. it's almost like you're never really fighting anyone else, really. Yeah. You know, because yeah. you have all the tools to beat anyone. But it's that chess game of like, oh, shit, like, here it comes. Should I throw it? Wait. Yeah, and yeah. that's like the – that's when you do your best, too, is when it yeah. is just reactions. You're not yeah. thinking at all. You hit that, like, flow in your mind and stuff. Yeah. And it's like – that's why, like, I, I think drilling is so important, and like, that's a wrestling thing too. But like in yeah. MMA, we don't drill. Like, I, I don't think people drill intelligently. Enough. Yeah. But it's like, if you can kind of ingrain these little things in your head, then you can shut off your mind when it's fight time, and then just kind of flow and just yeah. you already know what to do. It's like if you trust that first instinct and you already programmed yourself to do well, it's yeah. like magic happens. Then you know. And Absolutely, bro. It's alchemy. You know, yeah. you're in the lab. Yeah. Have you ever read The Alchemist? You ever read yeah, that that's, book? Yeah, that's yes. my favorite book. Yes, yeah, bro, that's my favorite book. Like, I got an Alchemist tattoo over here. I don't know if you can see it. It's like the, the oh, thing the on the book. Yeah. yeah, it's like the, I'll show you. Yeah, yeah, it's like got, the little atlas on it. Yeah, yeah. I can yeah, see it a little but, bit. But I'm Brazilian, and the, the author's Brazilian, so yeah. I always grew up on that. But, like, finding yourself, finding your journey. Obviously, like, when you see the stories of success, not only did those people like sharpen a certain gift, but they found that route and finding the route is hard, you know, yeah. figuring out what your destiny is. When did you know, like you started at 16, there's no way you're like, yo, I'm about to be in the UFC yeah. right away. So, or was it? No, I had a bunch of weird things. I never even wanted to fight. I, uh, yeah. that's actually like when I was telling you about that kid that was undefeated in, uh, in wrestling at our yeah. school he was he was sick with it yeah. but me, and, me and him didn't like each other like the first year of high school <laughs> oh, there was so, beef. yeah yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, had, I was like thinking real quick I was where'd like, you go to high school uh chatfield so chatfield okay yeah. okay so yeah, he was like our, our only stud at, yeah. at chatfield uh me and him became like really good friends later but uh originally i was like god i gotta learn something because this kid's gonna just yeah. put me on my fucking head you know what i'm saying <laughs> yeah, so bro. yeah so but once, once i started training i was like I started to kind of get confidence with it, and then I started getting really good at it. And uh, uh -huh. I, I didn't—I never wanted to fight, but it was just like I, it was always the next point of yeah. Like, I started, Evolution, yeah. yeah, yeah. My coach is like, "Hey, you want to do a jujitsu tournament?" And I was winning those. And then he's like, "Well, do you, do you want to do, like right when I turned eighteen? He's like, "Hey, uh, I signed you up for a fight." And I was like, <laughs> Damn. Okay. And then is that Mark? Time, Has it been Mark this whole uh, time? Or? I was training with Mark those like first two years, but he yeah. started to open up his own gym right when yeah. I turned eighteen. So okay. I, I stood under the same gym that we're at, and then. He kind of peer pressured me, and then I was winning all these amateur fights. And next thing you know, he was like, "Yeah, do you want to go pro?" So it was just like it was something that I was so passionate about. Yeah, like, I was going to every practice and all yeah, that stuff. Yeah, it was already you were ingrained in the yeah, yeah in yeah. that world. And then pretty much like I turned pro at like nineteen, and uh, from there I was like, "Okay, this is what I was born like. This is yeah. this is for it sure." Like click. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I yeah. remember thinking, "I'm like, I'm gonna be in the UFC by twenty, and then I'm gonna fucking this, yeah. this, and that." And it was just like it did not work out that way. Yeah. So, so what was your kind of route? Like, where did you? first start fighting was it lfa right away or no no and that's a like that's why i like the alchemist so much is like the journey was never just easy for me yeah like, i had a lot of, a lot of hiccups and all that stuff so it was like i did a lot of questioning my journey man uh yeah. but i started off locally here uh actually like right across the red and jerry's like red and jerry's like right yeah. down the street from here and uh, i found like some bar like there and uh <laughs> that's yeah, crazy yeah, 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 it was good bro it got shut down uh it got <laughs> shut down because there's a riot in there so that that promotion got shut down yeah. that pretty much that day yeah. so uh, it was my only fight for them but uh I had a lot of local fights, and then uh, I had a crazy fight for World Series of Fighting. Uh, yeah. Justin Gaethje was the main event. Oh, that's and sick! Yeah, bro. yeah, and I was like on the undercard, but I knocked some dude out. So they put me on the they they put the video of me knocking him out because I knocked him out pretty quick. Yeah, uh, up on the main card. So it was like I, I got my name out there that way, and then I got signed to a promotion called Combate. And then after I fought for Combate, a couple I had a crazy fight for Combate. Yeah, and. Uh, then I got signed by LFA. And, That's crazy. And then LFA is pretty much like how I spent most of my career and yeah. all that stuff. And so. LFA is kind of, for people who don't know, it's like, you know, essentially like a, the, what would you call it? Like almost like a feeder team, yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah, like the exactly. UFC is like looking at these guys, like who are the up and coming fighters, right? Yeah. And, and every time you see a UFC card, you'll see like, like 80 percent of the guys come from alifay yeah. so it's like they, they look at the next talent they're like okay this guy could probably go to the ufc and yeah just, like deep rosters basically right yeah yeah straight up so that's it's like awesome. I, and like that's why i was able to like go to the ufc and fight top 10 right off the bat because yeah. i was fighting nothing but killers from there yeah for like a thousand bucks like something crazy yeah. <laughs> right i go out there and get like smoke risk your life for <laughs> like you know freaking pack of newports yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah exactly that's what uh uh bite your foot yeah. oh thanks bro 
but uh, that's what people don't understand. Like when you're yeah, coming it's up, a grind, man, there's, bro. there's no money it's in a it. Grind. That you you don't know what you're walking into. So it was like uh, those last few fights for LFA, I was definitely questioning the journey. I was questioning my dream, and I was like, yeah. and then shit was getting tough, bro. I was like, my shoulder was injured. Yeah, it was like I knew I had to have surgery soon. So it was just like you questioned that journey the whole entire time, and it was yeah. like. Right, right when I was going to probably quit, it was like that's when it was like the most important to not, and like, yeah. that was like when I kind of found like, just discipline, like, right? Uh, you found like maybe a higher version of you, right? Like just testing yourself. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah. And it was just like I, I had to, my dreams had to get like I think the alchemist said it, it was like my dreams had to get tested for me yeah. to just like finish that journey. You know what I'm saying? And I, I tested all the knowledge I learned along the way amongst that, and it was like the last two fights for LFA, I didn't think I was like able to train fully because my, right. my shoulder was dislocating every yeah. practice. It was just yeah. like, yeah, yeah. So I, it was just like, I had to have that knowledge and I just had to trust my cardio and then trust what yeah. I did in the last few years and made sure that I was like doing exactly what I needed to do because yeah. uh, that's what gave me the confidence to go into those first few UFC fights and then win my LFA bout because uh, I wasn't practicing. I was hurt. I was, yeah. re I was really injured. You that's know? so crazy. Yeah. Do you still have that belt? Like, do they give you a belt? Do yeah, you get yeah. a version of it? Yeah. So I got, I got the belt and I just, I get, uh, every, like all my accomplishments are like all my like MMA accomplishments. I just give it to my dad because yeah. <laughs> otherwise I'll just have it in my room and I'll just yeah. feel like such a douche. Just having it all around the pictures of me and all this stuff. So it was just like, bro, uh, yeah, I just, that's like, wild. Yeah. So, um, that's funny you said that because uh, I kind of do the same thing like with my parents. They yeah. got like all my wrestling shit. Yeah. And when I got back home from college, right, I'm like living with my parents for a bit. And my mom had like decked out my room, but it was like myself. Yeah. You know? So it's like three big ass pictures of like me <laughs> wrestling in college, you know, my medals hanging. Yeah. Uh, so at the time I'm like still single, right? Like imagine bringing <laughs> yeah. a girl over. You got like life-size posters of Dude. yourself, banners and the, shit. This is my shrine yeah. to me. <laughs> <laughs> you go to my parents' house, it's still there, bro. This yeah. is like, you know, they have that room for you. Like yeah. it'll always be there. Your but little memoir. Here's my room. <laughs> yeah, so my, my dad has like an office with like, Pretty much mm. all my little, like, I have that LFA belt, which is really cool. Yeah. And then I have a bunch of, like, plastic belts that yeah. I won along the way. And yeah. uh, none of those, I mean, I guess none of it really matters in the, right. until it's a UFC. But that being said, yeah. it's just like. That, what that, matters, bro? It's yeah, the, the LFA belt's cool. <laughs> well, even, so I just won uh, the Brazilian Freestyle Nationals. I, like, flew out to Brazil because, uh, so I'm trying to make their Olympic team for, like, 2024. Um, um, so did you live in Brazil for a minute? or So I'm Brazilian. I moved like from Brazil when I was eight years old. Oh, damn. yeah, that's uh, awesome. Yeah, so I grew up here, and they reached out, said, hey, you should come wrestle in this tournament, like, get a, a look at the level of people. And so I went down there, bro, um, won four matches, like, walked through the tournament. I either pinned everybody in the first or teched them, didn't even get scored on. Uh, but they gave me this gold medal, right? Yeah. And, like, your boy cannot scratch it because it's, like, a Brazilian gold medal. Yeah. So it's, like just spray painted on there. I don't know what it is, oh, right? It's like, it's like cheap as, oh, okay. yo, it's just like cheap as hell, but it's like, you know, yeah. that's what I, they give out to the <laughs> freestyle national champion out there. You yeah. Know? Um, no, that's hilarious, bro. It's where did, uh, where did your name come from? Like raw dog? Like what is the, the, the beginning of it? The beginning of it was like just a, a drunken dude just screaming it. Like a, a drunken dude was screaming it in the, in the crowd. And like, I think it was just yelling raw dog him, raw dog him. <laughs> And then, uh, like, uh, we're back at the gym, like, oh, yeah, like, Raw Dog and Royville, that's what I'm going to call myself. I'm like, oh, we're that's kinda, hilarious. We're making jokes, but it was, yeah. like, some dude drunk in the crowd is screaming it, and then we just kind of, like, made jokes off of it. And then, like, I did that for years because it was, like, I, I didn't come out with that name until I fought under that Justin Gaethje card. Yeah. And then it was, like, I, I slept the dude, and uh, and then they said it on national television, which I, like, found so hilarious, especially being, like, 20, 20 yeah. years old. So you just threw it up on, like, the, <laughs> yeah, yeah, on, like, your bio. Yeah, <laughs> and yeah. It was, like, raw dog. Yeah, yeah. And then uh, and I tried yeah. to get rid of it a few times, but. Uh, it's just yeah, stuck. Uh, yeah, you can't get rid of that nickname. <laughs> yeah. I, like, even with the UFC, I don't even think I put it down. They're, like, do you have a nickname? I'm, like, no, this isn't going to work yeah. out. Yeah. like. If I win this fight, I'm in the top 10, and I'm like, who knows how far it would be to yeah. like, tell him from a ballot. Like, <laughs> you figure at some point it's yeah. going to turn people off. Or oh, anything. yeah. At, at one point, it has to go bad. Or, like, there, people are going to be like, you might catch, it. like, a condom sponsorship, you yeah, know? Yeah. It's just, like, there's just no big ass, like, you know? Condoms, like, the like opposite. Magnum, just on your shit, <laughs> yeah. you know, when you're fighting out there? Condoms, the opposite. Uh, <laughs> business to be sponsoring Raw Dog. I might be bad for their business, honestly. <laughs> oh, bro, you keep sleeping him. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. It's like only, only Raw Dog could do this. Yeah, you, know, you buddy, you normal guy, you gotta, you gotta put a raincoat on. You know Ra what I'm yeah, saying? Some Raw Dog condoms, that'd be nice. <laughs> <laughs> that might Just sell. like lamb skin, bro. Yeah, yeah. That that shit would be good. Um, 
have you felt like a, a little bit of like a celebrity status lately um, after, you know, kind of getting into the UFC and you, I mean, you had a great fight last, uh, your last fight there too. And I think your, your name is actually quite big, even though like that was your first time fighting right in front of like a, a huge crowd. Yeah. yeah, bro. So what happened there? Like after you won your LFA title, you step into the UFC, right? They call you up and, uh, so were you just fighting in the apex like the whole time? Yeah, I fought in the apex and then I fought out because it was like COVID too, right? Yeah, so yeah. they were just doing like apex shit. Yeah, I fought at the apex and fight island, so it was just like all, all secluded. So it was like I was fighting, I fought in two, uh, what is it, two title eliminators with no crowd, and it was like it, it was. I think it's like yeah. like one of the more fortunate things that could have happened because. Yeah. Uh, my first time walking out, I had fans. People were like cheering for me. They yeah, had like, yeah. like you know, what I'm saying posters yeah. and all that stuff. So I was like, I was surprised that uh, I was able to even get a pop. Like, and then it, even when I walked out, it was like me and so like you're thinking people don't haven't seen it almost. It yeah. feels like nobody saw it, and yeah. then all of a sudden you walk out and you got like yeah. hella fans. Yeah, it was funny too because like that that king suit like there's a, that grocery store like right up the street from here. Yeah. Um, the first time I ever got recognized was there too. And I was wearing like a COVID mask and everything. And like, you know, I'm not Dang, used to being bro. recognized. This isn't like, yeah. I'm not saying it's a bad neighborhood, but yeah. not the best of neighborhoods over here. <laughs> like, and that then, Brandon Roy ball, run it, bro. Yeah, yeah, no. And then like, some kid like kept looking me up and down and I was like, what the fuck? Like, I was like, what the yeah. fuck? Is this full following me? And then like walk around and I got my checkout and he's waiting there. And I'm like, this fool's about to get <laughs> bucked. And I was like, I, I kind of looking at him. He walked up to me. He's like, can I get an autograph and a picture? And I was like, Oh yeah, for sure, bro. I thought you were about to swing on me. Like, I was getting ready for anything at that point. The so, first interaction, bro. Yeah, I, so, I mean, I'm still not used to it. It's still yeah. like, oh, anytime I have somebody that recognizes me or wants to take pictures and stuff. Well, bro, do you remember seeing me in Vail? Yeah, I had to do. I, I had to do a solid, right? Your your boys getting into PR, but uh, so we're in Vail. We're at that LFA fight, and I run into Brandon, and we're like in our way. Uh, we're on our way into the bathroom. Yeah. Right, so we're in the bathroom and like I use the bathroom, whatever. And then the guy recognizes Brandon and wants to take a picture, but like he wants to do it in the bathroom. <laughs> and I'm just like, bro, we're not doing it. Like as we're walking out, I'm like, no, 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 we're not doing it here. So we walk out, I take the picture. Um, but bro, that's like celebrity status, bro. A <laughs> man can't take a pee without yeah. getting his picture I taken. I took a a picture, like a <laughs> selfie, because this dude's this dude's phone died. Yeah. Uh, he's like, bro, I need a picture. And me and him were both taking a piss. I was like, we can take a selfie right now. So I have a selfie that I sent to that dude later on. And I was like, oh, yeah. I mean, I was I was drunk at the time. But Dang. It, it was one of those scenarios where, uh, yeah, it was right after that. It was right after the, the fight. I went up and I went up to the crowd and I went back to just watch the fights. I had good seats. And I was like, all right, cool. Let's just go watch this. I was sitting down. I went to go take a pee. And then by the time I was just getting swarmed, you know. So, yeah, dude. Uh, Especially at an LFA event, too, because yeah. it's like. Your boy's reigning champ, you yeah, know, yeah, yeah. just coming off some dubs. Oh, th this was uh, my last fight in the UFC. This was my oh, last really? Fight. Yeah, yeah. So I went yeah. right back in the crowd after that, which was like, it was kind of dope because I was just having a great time with the crowd. I, yeah, people dude. were buying me beers, all the, all the above. And then That's I got to watch, sick. then I got to watch a good night of fight. So it, it worked out really well. But there was like, everybody's waiting for me in the bathroom. So I was just like, I had to take a piss no matter what. So I'm yeah. over here taking a selfie <laughs> and then with my own like phone. And then, and then I was just sending it. Air dropping. <laughs> Air dropping it. Yeah. Air Dude, dropping that's it. That's so crazy. That's so crazy. <laughs> what, what did you walk out to? Uh, shimmy shimmy ya. That's my that's my song by ODB because it's like ooh baby I like it raw yeah yeah. So it's like I always thought that was a good play and I remember like before I got to the UFC and I was using the name Raw Dog I was like if I get to the UFC this is gonna be the song I play every yeah, time yeah yeah. It's like it's a cool song it's fun and uh, yeah gets it, you hype yeah it puts me in a good mood too because yeah. like sometimes you like like we're talking but I listen to nothing but gangster music and it's like. I, <laughs> I fight super aggressive or it's like, yeah. I need to fight a little bit calmer. I'm going to be aggressive yeah. no matter what, but like having yeah. a little bit of calmness mixed in there is what's going to be like the more intelligent move. You yeah. know? Cause do you I, feel like it's from like a fight or flight, like cage gets locked. It's like, I'm, Oh, yeah. Cause a part of it is like I'm fucking scared. Let's oh, fucking yeah. go. Uh, you know uh, what I'm uh, saying? That's it's literally that feeling. A hundred percent. It's more of that than anything. Yeah. It's, it, it's like I fight super aggressive out of fear, yeah. and it's like if I'm not doing anything, then I have to worry about what he's going to do, and I hate doing that. So right. It's like, I'd rather have someone on the defense and just come out guns a blazing. You know. Yeah. I'd have rather, him react. Yeah, yeah. I'd rather stay dangerous than stay safe out there. You know what I'm Absolutely, saying? Absolutely. So it's bro. like I just want people to just. Right off the bat, and that was like when I was younger, I'd run out and then throw a head kick no matter what, and like yeah. that was like my thing. I'd run out and just start whipping <laughs> head kicks, just like I want this motherfucker to know that I'm taking this serious, and I want him to be scared. You know, I want him to react yeah, to what I'm dude. doing, and I always thought that was like a good way to go do it. Just go out and just be super aggressive. Yeah, so, absolutely. That was like my wrestling style too. 
Um, so I'd come up to the circle, right? Like you've seen wrestling matches yeah, yeah. and I would just like always like fucking slap my hand hard as fuck, like yeah. and do it like that, but just hard as fuck. And then like just get into wrestling stands. And first thing, bro, I would just club like yeah. as fucking like I'm ripping this dude's head off. And same thing, like first takedown. I used to always get like penalty points sometimes because I'd take a dude down and just fucking like throw a bow, like nothing too aggressive. Yeah. But it's also like, yo, I'm, I'm above not... breaking the rules. Like yeah. I'll take you down out of bounds, like throw you into the crowd, like you know, especially at like duels and stuff. So yeah. it, it's a mental game for yeah. sure, hey, you know. And you're programming these people. You're programmed yeah. to lose. You're programmed to take a beating. And it's like I, yeah, I, I, I like a little bit of that like mentality too. Is just like that's I'm a good way to put it. Yeah, yeah. I, I want to program this dude to to be scared of me at all times. Yeah. And it's like you know, uh, like and you, you like it. you feel it sometimes in practice too. It's like if you train with someone, enough, yeah, you, you can break the, somebody. Yeah, yeah, and you like get mentally. the yeah, and you get the better of them. They almost accept losing to you or something yeah. like that. Or like forever yeah, almost. Yeah, yeah. In that situation, where it's like yeah. I, I want to make that as well known in a fight as possible right yeah. off the bat i want to start hey i'm better than you i'm more aggressive than you and i'm scarier than and you. i'm winning every situation like yeah. oh i'm here yeah even if it's like a short bro i see it with like hand fighting even up against the cage right it's even just like getting positions yeah, yeah. where they feel like oh fuck like i could get fucking hit from here yeah, yeah and it's just like mounting those up over a fight right yeah and it's like and then it goes back to that flow state too it's like if, yeah. I, if I can make someone feel in in danger then it's like they're not flowing as well and they're thinking a little too yeah, much about what i'm doing and it's like i can get them to not think about what they're doing and finding their flow state then yeah it's like, like what is he doing next yeah, yeah and they're yeah, not yeah. worried about what they're doing yeah exactly if i can install that fear in you then it's like that's that's how i know I'm like oh, okay i'm gonna beat this dude's ass and all yeah. that stuff or i'm gonna make him desperate to do something and it's like if i can get someone to do desperate shit then and I can definitely start taking over. Yeah, I could start exposing them. Yeah, yeah, I'm super, I'm super chaotic, and I, I thrive in those moments too. So it's like if I get him to do something desperate, and like do a desperate like wrestling shot right. where they're not in proper tech, like proper yeah. stance, like I can get a quick choke in, or I can get yeah, whatever it is in, or I can just once again if they shoot in, I go for the choke and don't get it. Like I'm, I'm installing fear. Right, yeah. right. And, like I, winning, winning that position, or like exposing them, or like yo, I see your mistakes, I see what you're doing. Yeah, yeah. At Factory X, we have like words of the year and stuff, and uh, yeah, I, my, my last year was faith, and I was trying to think of like what mine is going to be this year, <laughs> and I was like, I, I think I'm going to stick to the word menace, and like uh, just because it's like menace is someone that causes harm or something yeah. like, like I think that's a definition. It's like so, someone that causes harm and a danger to society and all that, and it's just yeah. Like, I want to cause harm. I want yeah, people to just be, be scared. Dangerous, and yeah. I want to be a menace in that yeah. cage for sure, man. So I was like, I was trying to think of a word of the year. I'm not sure that that's going to be it, but it's yeah. like, that would be a good one to kind of like come back to. And it's like, what, what do I want to accomplish okay. this year? Just be like a fucking okay. savage. You so y'all, y'all better watch out, man. <laughs> Don't piss this man off next year. All right? he's, up to, he's up to no good, bro. Yeah, yeah. He's up to no good. But I mean, like, and that's as far as fighting too, is like, maybe I should be a little more smarter and like, yeah. like maybe like have like a championship mindset or something yeah. like that. But it's like, kind of just want to be dangerous as fuck and yeah. like you know and gain yeah. that that, rep that that reputation of just being one of the more exciting dangerous well, fighters in the there. work bro i mean yeah. you're putting in the work regardless right so yeah. it's even like being that dangerous guy regardless it's gonna fall back to like the work that you're putting in you know yeah. so and if it's championship level work well you could broadcast it as a menace if you want you know yeah, what i'm yeah. saying uh or even it, you know what's crazy about it is i think with fighting with martial arts as you sharpen yourself like you sharpen your mind you know and i know you mentioned like flowing a ton of times do you have to find that headspace i mean do you meditate like do you do you do stuff like that yeah yeah i i, I meditate not like a, a ton not as much as i want to yeah. but i do meditate and yeah. uh you know what helped me like a lot is like reading like just reading i guess it's yeah. like i which is crazy. And it's like, I get so self-conscious thinking about it yeah. is like, I didn't read until after like school. Yeah. After school, I so feel like, you. I used to spark note a ton of shit, bro. <laughs> Just everything was spark notes. You know, <laughs> now I read the books. Like I'll think back to books we were supposed to read in high school or yeah. some shit. And I read them like Siddhartha. I don't know if you yeah, remember. Yeah, right Siddhartha. I read that Fire, a bunch of bro. Yeah. Fire. That was one of the and only I never books I read it. I never read it in high school. I'm like, damn, that's, this would have helped me. Yeah, the Alchemist. That's yes, when I. That's bro. the one I skipped completely through. I was like, fuck this book. I'm yeah, not gonna read bro, this book. It's so good. Some somehow bullshitted through it, got yeah. away with it. But it's like as an adult, I was like, damn, I should have read that at 16. That would have been way more important to me. Yeah, like, dude. like to not give up and all that stuff. I read yeah. it when, when I was already in the UFC and stuff. So it was just yeah. like, I, I wish I was a. A little ahead, ahead on myself with some of those stuff is just reading and just staying, keeping my mind sharp there too. Because fighting, you know, like I feel like I have all the skills in the world to be a champion at right yeah. now, but it's like I need to fix my mental game for sure. Because yeah. uh, I was telling the team this the other day is like, uh, 
when that cage closes, man, uh, everything you've ever done wrong kind of comes across your mind. Everything, everything that you messed up on, yeah, the, all the, the days, shortcuts, yeah, the days that you just didn't push it to your fullest, yeah. like that'll come. Across and you your know, mind. especially like, it's like, oh, I got to get these sprints in, and you're like, oh, fuck it, yeah. And yeah. then you go home, you're like, damn, yeah. And that's just shit, <laughs> that, and that's just shit you only know too. And like, yeah. that's like, you can bullshit it. Maybe the coach sees you, and you're working hard when the coach sees you, but it's like. You can't bullshit yourself ever. You right. know, you can't bullshit yourself. So when that cage closes, your thoughts are coming across. And it's like, if you know you bullshitted even like a couple of days, that shit's going to come across your mind. And it's like, you the doubt does not belong in that cage. Second yeah. guessing does not belong yeah. in that cage. Confidence and just like uh, confidence, fear, of, of course, be be scared because yeah. uh, you should be scared, man. Yeah, uh, that shit's dangerous. Yeah, you yeah, should be scared. Yeah, and then and then fear keeps you sharp, man. Fear keeps you sharp. So it's just like if you if you allow doubt in there, then once again you're starting to think, and then it's like yeah, yeah. you can't have doubt in that cage. You got to know you're going to go in there and dominate. That there's moments that you lose, but they're just moments, and you can't let them get the best of you. Yeah. So I was reading this book called The Way Champions Think uh, last week, and it's it's been really it's been really cool, especially for fighting. But it's just like a really good golf player if he hit if he misses like a yeah. if he misses a shot or messes up on a shot, he knows that the next shot's gonna be even better because. He doesn't mess up, and it's like statistically speaking, it's going to be better. So right off the bat, yeah. it's not like he's like, I messed up on this shot, and then drowns yeah. himself in his mind. And you can see fighters you know, do that. I play golf sometimes, yeah. and it's terrible, bro. Because yeah. I'm, you know, I'm like either focused on the next shot, right, or I'm worried about. I cannot put like a good hole together. Yeah. Do you play at all? No, not. It's at all. awful, bro. Don't start. It's and, fun, but it's awful. Yeah, and that's another game that you like. Once you're talking about your wrestling, it, yeah. is it's a hundred percent you versus you. You can't yeah. worry about how another golfer is golfing that day. Yeah, you and like uh, and I've never golfed, so this is just yeah. pure me reading a book and yeah. watching Happy Gil <laughs> and watching Happy Gilmore a million times. Is you just gotta gotta focus on your like you gotta focus on your game and and yeah. all that stuff. It's uh, you said you like Siddhartha. Yeah. Ha bro. Have you ever read uh, the Bhagavad Gita? The Bhagavad Gita? I don't know what you said. No, it, it, yeah, yeah, it, it, it's, like, it's like that, but even better. Yeah. There's a. There's let, me, a let me grab that. What is it called? Bhagavad Gita. So, okay. Uh, B H A G V A D. B H A V A D. Like, yeah, it, it's virtually Hindu scripture. But uh, it, it's talking about a warrior uh, specifically. But, but like, what is that? God, there's, there's a, a movie based off it. Um, it's it's a golfing movie with Will Smith and yeah yeah but oh I know what you're talking about where he's like dead or something yeah it's like or like he like comes that. in and like corners like or like I don't not corners I don't yeah know like Matt Damon or something yeah yeah Matt yeah, Damon he yeah. comes in and corner but he was just talking about like hey you got to find your swing and it's like everybody yeah. gets so so ner so nervous about like uh like everybody else's game or what other people are doing or just get so lost that you just forget what makes you great in the, in the yeah. process of all that stuff and it's like. Golfing really is just you versus you out there. But uh, those those two movies in that book, uh, like the book, the Bhagavad Gita is, is based off of, or the movie is based off that book. Okay. So it's like small little scriptures yeah. and, and, and like stuff like that. Like well, bro, there's so many lessons and like so many things that have been passed down for like generations through religion or through just practices, right? Or even like meditation or, you know, you read like the alchemist, you feel like that person you feel like you're going through that journey yeah. but you are right i think a lot of people sometimes they don't realize like you're exactly where you're supposed to be right now right like everything means nothing at the same time but like life is all you're ever gonna do and you can find the hand like i i believe there's a god right there's definitely a higher power um moving right what, what, whatever you believe but at the same time you know, there is that, like, you ever run into, like, serendipity or something like that, right? But the hand of God is always moving. The problem is, is, like, people of our generations, they're focused on, like, social media, right? They're, they're not seeing people's, the omens. Exactly, bro, because most people's minds just go from thought to thought, and 90% of your thoughts are the same as yesterday, right? But if you can start having those conversations with yourself, there's always those two voices, right? There's the voice of, let me check Instagram. Like, let me do this. Let me do that. Then there's the other voice where it's like, Hey Brandon, you should probably hang up that towel as you leave the room. Yeah. Right. And what I try to do, bro, and you should even try this too. Cause I mean, it's helped me out a lot staying in that flow state, not even in just athletics, but like your mind and controlling your mind. And when you can control your mind, you can control time. You know what I'm saying? Cause you, then you have so much to do, yeah. but it's literally like, I'll go work out. I don't look at social media, anything, but then I leave and I just listen to whatever voice is in my head. Right? Like the voice. So if I go grab an energy drink, 
I'll like pause in front of like the glass and I'll be like, should I get a yellow one or a white one? And I'll just wait. And just see what you're and like, what pops what in. my mind comes in. It's like white. I just grab it, go about my day. But I try to like do that to myself like multiple times, almost like gamify it. Yeah. And then if you can always control that voice, then you're always present. And then, bro, you could just see things line up. It's like so perfect. It's weird. Yeah. But it's hard to get in that zone, you know? I was watching or I was watching like a YouTube video and uh, it was just talking about like like the first thoughts that come up come up to you and he he was talking about he was like uh he was like one of those like telemarketer type of people like through lawyers specifically I, I forgot what his business was exactly yeah but sometimes he'd scroll and just kind of like see what name popped out automatically to him and he was just kind of following like his natural instincts and he goes for some reasons I got like way more uh I got way more like I was selling way more off of that and it's like really? I wonder how much of that like natural intuition like people have that we just yeah. choose to ignore on a daily basis and all that bro stuff. that's wild I've always been like very intuitive like very intuitive. Yeah. Like I've always been able to like meet somebody and get a sense of who they are, like truly. Right. Um, and I think that comes from, you know, everything that I am today was like something that I try to build when I was like insecure. Right. So I was like 85 pounds as a freshman in high school, like four eleven, right. Couldn't get girls, couldn't get, you know, wasn't an athlete, like wasn't good, was little. Right. And I like try to overcome these things as you're building your ego as a kid. Right. And then I accomplished all this stuff, like even becoming an all American, like I realized it was just like, Oh, that was just for my ego. Kind of like, yeah. I knew I was this nice. What's up, you know? Yeah, yeah, and then you kind of realize that like, none of it really means much, right? Like muscles are great. But to me, what they mean is like my discipline, you know, stress relief every day. The fact that I have them like whatever, you know, I would do it for no muscles. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's kind of like you start realizing who you are and who you were becoming for the world. You yeah, know? yeah. You, uh, you're, you're focused, like you almost focus on the end goal, but what's important is the lessons along the way. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And, and it, you realize that when you grab a LFA belt, you yeah, know, yeah. and you talk about like, yo, I had to overcome some shit back there. I couldn't, yeah. I wouldn't be here if I, you know, imagine on that day you had given up yeah. before you grabbed that belt, before you jumped into this, you know? Yeah. The uh, the person that um God damn, I wanna forget her name. It's like uh, Sir something Sir something, but Sir Isaac Hillary. <laughs> Sir Isaac Hillary, I think it's the is first Is that real? That's the um, real I'm name. pretty sure oh, that's okay. it. I'm pretty sure that's it. It is the first person that conquered Mount Everest. And it's like to to go conquer Mount Everest, he had to go yeah. he had to go live there for uh live like on the mountain for forever, like under yeah. the mountain and just kind of acclimate and then like do a couple like ascends and then just kind of see yeah. where he's at and it took months and it took and, and even to get on the mount everest it took weeks and uh That's took crazy. days and all that stuff but once he got to the top of mount everest he looked over the uh looked over the top for 15 minutes and it was yeah. just like that, that's awesome but it's like it almost tells you that the journey is what matters you know yeah. the destination He's was like cool. done check yeah 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 exactly <laughs> like what now fuck looked, he looked over yeah. it had a cup of coffee He's like this is cool and then just kind of went back down and it's like uh you know, the, the journey is what matters the most. And it's like, it's, it's like that, uh, that cheesy thing. You got to stop to smell the flowers, but it's like, you yeah. got to enjoy the journey. That's what's making you. And, uh, I, I feel that with the UFC is just like, I feel like I'm so grateful to be in the UFC because yeah. the come up from the UFC was so hard. Like yeah. I was, I was working overnights. I was doing everything, man. I was doing anything, yeah. but like I was barely sleeping and it was yeah. like, I was sacrificing so much and for nothing. And people don't realize that like at yeah. the time for nothing really yeah. just for like, this vision of you being able to do it at the highest level. Yeah, you know? and like that's a vision like you, most people like around you don't believe in. They're like, no, yeah, you go to like, school. Yeah, just, the, yeah, yeah, and it's like, and the the consequences of it not working out is horrible because yeah. like I have long term damage on my body. I'm sure. Yeah. I'm sure I have like a little bit of head damage, yeah. all the above. And it's like, I remember those last two fights. And I'm like, this might not work out. If I lose this fight, then it's like I have to quit and I have yeah. to just move on with life and yeah. all that stuff. And like. Man, uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. Like accepting that and just learning those lessons along the way, I think it just made me so grateful to be in the UFC, you know, and all, like all that stuff. It's just yeah. like, what would you be doing, you think, if you did go the other way? Like, <laughs> I don't if you, <laughs> what would you be doing? I don't know, man. Yeah. I, I worked in a juvie before, and that had to be like one of the more like, um, for me, like one of the more like self satisfying. Like, uh, it, it was it was a cool job. It was hard. Really? Like yeah. as a prison guard or something? Yeah, yeah, kind of like a prison really? guard. The juvie yeah. system's weird because it's like. Like, I'll be here with, like, 12 kids, and it'll be me sitting on a couch next to two of them, and it's, like, yeah. it's just, like, I hang out with them all day. So, it's, like, a, it's like a prison guard. It's, like, a babysitter. It's, like, a uh, make sure they don't fight. Sometimes I had to restrain yeah. kids. Uh, but, um, 
it was it, it was it was cool, man. It was. You really ever cool. get somebody trying to mess with you back back there, or what? Uh, and you're like, you don't bit. know, bro. You don't know. A, a little bit. Uh, when I first got into it, I think they all just thought I was a little soft. But I, I got a lot of respect, and like I know yeah. how to talk. I think the the real important thing about like working in like a system like that, and like especially with kids, is just knowing how to talk to somebody and yeah. just. Being calm, being calm when shit's not calm is, I think, super important too. Yeah. Like that's actually something that I can think fighting for is. Uh, I was I was a full on MMA fighter. I was almost yeah. to the UFC by then, but uh, it was uh, th- those kids when they're freaking out, going chaotic, and yeah. then you have it's an, like oh, emotional. Yeah, yeah, and then you have a person with a psychology degree next to me that's like trying to calm them down, <laughs> yeah. but they don't know how to react, and yeah. like they're not getting in fights on a daily basis like me yeah. or like this kid even. Like yeah. even this kid's probably growing up in a wild environment, so it's like. He's used to the chaos. I'm definitely used to the chaos, but this person was not. So it's like when they talk yeah, to him. Yeah, keep them calm. Yeah. <laughs> Just also. Yeah, exactly. And yeah. then when they're talking to him, they're not talking to him in a calm way. They're like, you yeah. need to calm down. And it's like, yeah. how is he going to calm down if you're screaming at him? Like, That's crazy, yeah. bro. So how like, long did you work there? Two and a half years, three years. That's yeah. crazy. It was it was super cool, man. It was it yeah. was a really cool job. And like it, it was one of those, I think, um, I don't know, it just it, it made me want to change who I was as a person for sure. Yeah. And uh there's there's a lot you'll realize real quick man there's a, a lot of talent and there's a lot of like waste of talent almost and not even to say waste but it's just like, yeah there's a there's a lot of uh potential oh, out absolutely. there man that untapped potential and it's like you could see it in some of these kids is like uh there there was moments where i'm like damn this kid could change the world really if he yeah. just wasn't born into the shoes he was in or the yeah. life that he was in and well i honestly think man that like anybody has the power to change it change the script at any point in time you know yeah. Um, it sucks when you see it like go so far where it's like they even believe it's hopeless, you know, but, and, and that's why I think even we were talking flow, like controlling the thoughts, right? Controlling your thoughts, controlling the most moments allow you to control the narrative. You know what I'm saying? If you're yeah. controlling, you know, you can't control everything, but if you can control most moments in your life, most minutes, like you could apply that in any direction, you know, yeah. and obviously I like have a sense of direction. That's probably the toughest thing sometimes, but it's very easy to find if you like get out of, you know, what society wants you to be sometimes. Or, or, or just get out of the place that you're in. Cause yeah. like some of those kids were, uh, have, have all the, like the biggest dreams. Like, Hey, I, I, I like in, in the middle of there doing all these programs, getting yeah. like these little licenses along the way. They're like, That's I'm cool. going to do this. I'm going to do that. But then they go back to home. Yeah. And when they go back home, their parents are mixed up in this. And it's just like the yeah. whole lifestyle is kind of intertwined. So it's like, man, I, I do believe these kids can change. I believe, I believe that to the fullest, but it's like, h- how hard is it too when your environment's messed up and your environment's yeah. thinking that way? I was, uh, uh, there's like this, uh, I, I don't know if it's like a, like a statistic or whatever it is, yeah. but it's like, uh, and, and it goes back to people being programmed a little yeah. bit too. Is just like well, when you're in a, when you're in a system that's failing you, and you're that's all you see is failure and all that yeah. stuff is just like you see your culture around you failing. And it, it was it was talking about like people taking tests, and it was like when when you're like like being a, a, a like a Hispanic kid, yeah. One of the first things they do on these big tests are like, are you yeah. are you like Hispanic and all this stuff, yeah. And they start narrowing down like, oh, I'm I'm Hispanic, uh, yeah. Latino man, and it's like. A Latino man, they're not really like in, in American society, they're not known as the smart you. culture and race. So it's like right off the bat, yeah. you get a little discouraged and yeah. stuff like that. And it's like, yeah, it's like not like discrimination, but in a way, it's like, you know, yeah. segregation yeah. a little bit. And, you and feel it's, a little it's different. Categor- yeah, it's categorization too. So you're categorizing yeah. yourself in something that's not already dominant in something. And if you already have that pre programmed in your mind, which I think most society would say that, like, you know, like if you come from a poor neighborhood yeah. and and you're from this specific race that normally like you don't succeed and you see it all around right. you too when you're Absolutely. that age and, and you see that around you. It's like that's the only lifestyle, you know, is people that never people you look up to like yeah. they're also failing, you know, like maybe you had an uncle. You're like, this guy's the man and you grow up and you're like, oh, shit, like, yeah, and he hasn't like he's just chilling, you know, or whatever or even in in like prison or something like that right it's just kind of crazy yeah and when you're a kid like uh i I remember when i was a little kid and i realized weed was illegal it was the fucking craziest thing to me (laughs) because i remember (laughs) joints would get passed over me like i would be at a family event like everybody would smoke weed and all that stuff and i remember like when i found out i'm like wait that's illegal i was like yeah everybody's doing it yeah yeah i was like i didn't like you know so it's like you don't know what's around you and and when when craziness is around you just your normalness and it's like I don't know to get out of that is is amazing and that's that's like they write movies about people like that you know that escape the fucking that escape the craziness around them and make something of themselves and and all that and like you you see the pursuit of happiness a bunch of different movies that are like that and it's like well and bro why not you right like and that's what i like about the alchemist too it's you know they say mac tub right like it is written so like the same hand that wrote like tom brady's story 
Ro Brandon Royval's story, Ro, Ro my story, Ro Brian's, you know? So it's just crazy to think like, wow, I the potential's limitless, you know? If you find your your way, right, or your path, but the, like you could be the Tom Brady of whatever, yeah. right? Like you you are the, I, I saw somebody said uh, like the Justin Gaethje of the flyweight division, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But it's like everything has this serendipity. Did you ever feel like uh we might even call it like poetic justice where stories in your life just kind of like come full circle. Like, isn't it weird that this and this happened and now I'm here, yeah. you know, do, does that ever happen for you yeah, where you're like, sure. wow, this is so like crazy. Yeah, it was I, meant to be. I think that about fighting too is just like, uh, like my name is Brandon, like Brandon. Cause my dad was a huge Bruce Lee fan and yeah. he wanted to name you Bruce. My mom was like, fuck no. And <laughs> no. He's like, we'll name him Brandon after Brandon Lee. And like, so yeah. I even think like stuff like that is like, yeah. I don't know if I made it in my head to be a fighter or if it's just like, I was like, sh- like, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. it, like it was like destiny. Yeah. bro. Yeah, Have you ever different. like done uh like psychedelics or anything like that? Yeah. 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 For sure. I've done Do you it. ever feel that way? Like it was all meant to be like everything has a point. Yeah. Yeah. For sure, man. Uh, Especially when you dive deep in that stuff, it's yeah. like, uh, it feels like it all tied together. And then I was like, th- this is where I was meant to be in this yeah. situation. And uh, it, it's just crazy because it's like the, a little bit of that too is that, that like, I guess once again, like that program inside of me is just like, I should not be here. You know, yeah. like I should not be in like imposter UFC. syndrome. Almost. Oh, a hundred percent, bro. I, yeah. I do. I feel like I deal with that too much. And it's like, it's still hard for me to accept that I'm in the UFC or that I'm close to fighting for a title and all yeah. that stuff. And it's like. I'm like, damn, every time I go out there and fight, I'm like, this could be my last fight for the UFC. Yeah, maybe they're going to cut me. Like, I have that, like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna lose yeah. all this. And it's like, But you could tell that it's maybe, like, self-defeated programming, you know, yeah. that just we build up over time. Because, I mean, even uh, even the kid, bro, is trying to get an autograph. You're like, oh, I'm about to have to punch this kid, <laughs> you know? Um, but I think as you come into your own, bro, and then those moments, like your last fight, they just solidify that you're meant to be there, you know? Yeah, and, um, and then it's just building that confidence of like, oh, I, I am where I belong, and you know, and it's like I, I definitely have to talk to myself positively because yeah. it's like you know, like it, it, even though like it, it's all temporary, the UFC is yeah. obviously not forever. It's right. just like appreciate it while you have it. it I always oh, think of it like every, every little country love song is just love it while it's here, you know, and like love it to the fullest while yeah. it's here. And it's like that that's what I, that's where like this year I've tried to take heavily is just I I know this won't be forever. I know yeah. I can't be in the a top competitor in the UFC flyweight division forever. I'm, I'm going to be for a long time. Yeah. Kidding. I got a program in my head. Absolute, you know what I'm saying? No, absolutely, bro. How old are you now? 30. So it's 30. Like, so, I, have, I mean, you still got time, bro. Yeah, you I got, got like, time. I don't want to fight for that long, though. Yeah. I've been doing this since I was a little kid, you know? So I, I want to fight for maybe four more years, try to make as much statements as possible, get a belt, yeah. defend a belt as many times, and then get out of there, make my escape, and then try to do yeah. something else, man. I want to do something. You got, like, a girl or anything? You yeah, got, like, yeah, kids I'm, on the way? No, I don't got any kids okay, or anything. Right. I'm, da- I'm dating, but, yeah. Uh, yeah. Nice, nice, bro. That's awesome. So do you see yourself, like, starting a family? I, I want I want. I don't family. want to put you on the spot. No, 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 no. It's okay. Yeah, yeah, no, I definitely want <laughs> a kid. She's watching, bro. It's yeah. like, this is a verbal contract, yeah. you know? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I want a kid, at least. I definitely want a kid. I want, like, maybe a daughter or something, but um, I, I don't know. I, I don't. I also just don't see myself living like normal, not this chaotic talking shit to fighters every yeah, day, bro. like being in the mix. How of fun has too. that been? Like just, you know, cause I'm sure at the like LFA level, right. The shit talking's a little bit like, is it quieter? Is it louder? Or, you know, obviously UFC with the big platform, yeah. you get to say some odd shit. Yeah. I mean, I don't necessarily talk shit to like, the guys I'm going against, I was talking more yeah. of like the guys that are like my friends that I'm in the gym, you know, you know, <laughs> yeah. shoot the shit on a daily basis. Yeah. It's like, I feel like being a part of a team has been such uh, um, you know, you've been a competitor yeah. your whole entire life. Yeah, it's like bro. being a part of a team. A bond, yeah, you know? it's something that I don't ever want to give up. So it's like uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do when I'm not talking shit to him. It's like, hey, you're talking to the number three. You're <laughs> talking to the number four flyweight in the room, motherfucker, or something, and just talking shit like that. So it's like yeah. I, don't, I don't know what I'm gonna do when that goes away. But it's just like as of now, once again, I'm just gonna love it while it's here to the fullest and just enjoy every moment, talk yeah. as much shit, and just be as you know, just enjoy the team as it's here too, because. These are the moments that I'm gonna look back on, and and the moments of my journey that I, you know are that are gonna be fucking that I'm gonna reflect on and tell my kids about yeah, one day. So dude, or like, even stories you keep to yourself, you know, you always like think of that moment. Yeah. But that's what's crazy. Also, like the juxtaposition of like, bro, you know, and this is what's dangerous about the UFC, right? Like, you might go into a bar and like pick a fight with a guy like you, you know, and then you are the number four flyweight in the UFC, right? And just yeah. give somebody some hands. And so, I'm small too, like uh, yeah. I'm not small and scrawny, so it's like I think people 
Well, if you're wearing like a jacket, bro, I'd yeah. be like, get the fuck. <laughs> yeah. And then you just like fuck somebody up. Who's you know? this little dude? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I, I actually want to fight. It's dangerous, bro. I want to fight. Dangerous. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I want to fight downtown and, uh, I, I literally beat this dude in like 20 seconds. It was like, I didn't get punched. And yeah. I, I won. I left. I pretty much went to the bar with all my friends. I walked backwards. Like, I was waiting for my friends to come in. So I was like, walking, like, took two steps backwards. Some dude even smaller than me bumped into me. And he's like, I should fuck you up right now. This, this, that. And I was like, bro, I, like, I'm good. Like, I, you know, I'm pretty good. At, like, I obviously yeah. avoid fights. Yeah. But I'm like, I'm good, bro. But I was just like, how crazy is this? Because I was like, Clearly, would have mopped that dude up. At yeah, least it, like, absolutely, I, I, bro. I you know that. your level. You know, yeah. you've probably been in enough brawls, <laughs> even at the bars or something, to yeah. know like, okay, I got this shit. Yeah, I know that. But sometimes I'm like, is this a, uh, is this like somebody testing? <laughs> is this somebody's greater will testing someone? Like this yeah. guy's being an asshole to everybody all the time. Right. Maybe you should smack him. <laughs> like, yeah, bro. Maybe it was my, maybe it was his time to get smacked. Yeah. And I've been passing up these. But good maybe moments. it's a test for you also, right? Yeah. To just be like. Is he about to use this shit that, you know? Because yeah, yeah. obviously, like, you beating some dude's ass, it's like, wow, he fucked with the wrong dude, yeah. you know? And I don't have a big enough ego, and I've been humbled enough yeah. times throughout my life yeah. that it's like, I I don't really care if somebody's talking shit to me at all at this yeah. point. Like, it's like, oh, whatever, you know? I, I know what I can yeah. do, and, like, yeah. I, I don't have that, like, ego where I'm like, I need to beat his ass right now, yeah. you know what I'm saying? But uh, Absolutely. But I was always lucky. the guy getting punched, bro, for some reason, right? Like, I got the cauliflower here, but it's not, like, yeah. Big collie. It's like, you know, if you know. Yeah. You get what I'm saying? And I'm always wearing like fashion shit, you know, crazy shit. And I'm always like, some shit will pop off over there. Somehow it like <laughs> gets to me, bro. And I end up arguing with somebody. But that's why, you, you know, your boy don't live that life anymore. Yeah. Me of either. just like going out, you know, especially late 20s, bro. I'll drink like one night and I'm hungover i didn't even know what this was bro yeah. do you get hungover at all like if I, you ever I drink drunk, drank since uh my, my last fight i drank it like that Dang, day that bro. day of, i don't really drink i've, I've yeah. never been much of a drinker i'm kind of a control freak so i think that kind of comes into hand yeah but, i mean uh i have been in like situations one of the last times i went downtown and like it, i wasn't even drunk i was i was being the sober driver i yeah. took my cousin out I got jumped by a bunch of people. I got jumped for like 15 minutes. I, I was actually just got shoulder surgery. So I was in a sling. And I pretty much got swung on just being in the wrong place, wrong time. Just like you, man. Yeah, I, I turned down the wrong block. Somebody pointed at me. And I was like, is he pointing at me? And I'm like, probably not. And then next thing I'm getting punched in the face. I'm like, oh, shit. Like, next thing you know, I'm in the middle of a fucking fight. It was, a, it was bullshit. Dude, <laughs> but, that's wild. And yeah. I know um, you're supposed to be fighting Saturday, right? Yeah. Or today. 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 Oh, yeah, it would be today. Damn, dude. Um, and that was against who? Um, Amir Albazi. Okay. Okay. Do you know much about him? Yeah. yeah just, just well-rounded, pretty good wrestler. He's yeah. a 19 and one. So he's a really good record. Um, yeah. I'm sure, I'm sure he's going to win the fight tonight. Um, who did they put in against him? Some newcomer, some, yeah. uh, which is like really cool too. Cause it's like, that's the opportunity I was granted with is somebody fell out and then I took a short notice against a top 10 opponent and, uh, yeah. Amir Albazi, I think is number 10. <laughs> I think he's number 10, so it's like this guy has a really good opportunity to kind of come in and then make a name Climb for himself up, right yeah. after that, you know? So it, that's cool for him. It, it sucked that I had to pull out of the fight. I've never done that before, so it was just it was weird, yeah. Yeah, dude. Who, uh, obviously with him fighting now, right, like does – what happens when – I mean, you, if you haven't pulled out of a fight, right, but what happens in that scenario? Like do you just have to wait to get called up or do yeah. they call you up for the fights or yeah, who's it, putting these fights together? Is it management or is it like Dana? It, it's management. And then they, ha the Dana has like two dudes that, that do like the, the matchmaking for him. So I have Nick Maynard who does a really good job with all this stuff. But uh, for me, the, the fight that I was supposed to do, I actually took away from somebody else that got hurt. Some other dude got hurt. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, uh, I'll jump in there. Yeah, And then the fight before, like I was supposed to fight some of the month before and he pulled out of it. Like he got, he pulled out of it the day of the fight. So I had to make weight and the day of the fight, he's like, no, we're not fighting or something like that. Yeah. He had some sickness, but, uh, that's wild. It's yeah. good that they have people on like ready to go, bro. It's a big fucking organization, right? Like this show's happening. Yeah, and yeah. They got like 10 guys lined up to fight. You yeah, know? And then like, you know, it's the end of the year. I, I wanted at least one more paycheck. So as soon as that yeah. fight dropped out, his fight dropped out and I was like, I'll go fight number. Cause I'm, I'm number four. So it's yeah. like, I'll go back to fight yeah. just to fight one more time. Yeah. And then I hurt my wrist and it's like, um, it really, the, the risk going into it. Cause I just took off my stuff like a couple of days ago. So yeah. it's like, I, I would have pretty much been throwing a punch the day of the fight the first time. So it's like, Dang. um, it's a little dangerous. Yeah. yeah it's a little like too risky. uncomfortable. Yeah. yeah. Especially in that situation. Right. Cause you could also go the other way and be looking at a title fight. Right. Yeah. And so with like a hurt wrist, it's like, damn, could I like also just, 
you know, try to be tough and fucking fight with a broken wrist, you know, and yeah. and just not have a good one. Yeah, and and Humble is like ranked six spots behind me too, so it's like I have nothing to gain from the fight, and it yeah. was like I was it would be too risky to go in and then not train at all for a fight, and then also have nothing to really gain but a paycheck. So it's like. I, I was confident in myself. I think I could still like, whoop him with one yeah. with one hand or whatever <laughs> just, it is. I'm trying to believe in myself <laughs> like that, but uh, or just with like no training camp and just yeah. like being able to use my wrist the day of the fight. But um, it was also just too risky, and I'm too close to being where I need to be right now. Yeah. Like, I'm, I'm top. Well, dude, now you're doing these interviews. How's like the the personality side of it? Do Do you enjoy getting up on you know up on stage and answering questions is it is it like a whole new dynamic you're having to learn yeah i mean i feel like i'm getting a little better talking but like i yeah. oh man when i first started doing all this stuff or even like when they put the mic in my face after my first amateur win yeah. i remember i was like i was like and fucking fucking this fucking <laughs> uh, i didn't know how to talk you know so it's just like yeah. i'm getting better i'm getting better and yeah. uh staying calmer and uh you know i i was just like so insecure when i was younger and now that i can kind of like come into myself you know uh, i've learned a lot of things and then it's just like i've gotten a lot better at the, these scenarios and it's like i envisioned it now too it's like i can i can picture myself being better up there but back in the day i remember i'm like i'm gonna stumble on these words if i ever get interviewed yeah. i'm gonna do this i'm gonna do that so it's like I, you know I, once again just to, to go back to everything just like i was programming myself wrong yeah. I was programming myself to to fail almost and it's like uh, yeah bro you gotta become raw dog you know what i'm saying yeah yeah, yeah. You sometimes you're up there being brandon you gotta be raw dog bro you know raw do you, doggy dog do you believe that's a good idea like uh do you believe like taking on all three go would be good like that yeah kind of well i think uh if it's relatable and you can really play the character you know because like for example connor like became a character in a way you know or like patty the baddie is just like a character yeah and you could play to your strengths, you know? Um, but I feel like, you know, when like Colby Covington did it, it's just like corny. Yeah, it's corny. But that's like what he plays off of. Or even Henry Cejudo like tries. Yeah. So it's like super cringy. And then he uses that, you know? But I think just having something like relatable, like even Raw Dog is just like such a crazy name to have up there. Yeah. But it's like, there's only one Raw Dog. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And it, it allows like it. Uh but, like, back to that Conor McGregor thing, too, is, like, mm. now, now that Conor McGregor, is like, almost lost his, like, the glow that was so special at the yeah. time, you know? It seems yeah. like he's kind of playing a character now, too. Oh, yeah. Like, he's, he's trying to play like him old self. Yeah, yeah, and he's trying like, to play into his old self, and yeah. it's just, like, it, it's not as cool anymore, and it's, like... It, well, honestly, those guys are after a different thing, you know? Like, yeah. he's after that bag, bro, and people will pay him $20 million to act like douchey Conor McGregor, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, it's, like, I feel like, to a certain level... Uh, it's a different game. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, so I, I think it definitely depends on if you see yourself like outside of the UFC, like building a brand, you know, or like going into still being in the public eye. Like if you enjoy that, then you would be missing out on not building so, like some kind of like crazy recognition while you have the platform, you know? Because yeah. all the flop fighters that go out there and they're just like very respectful and they say nothing different and it's just whatever. Yeah. And they're not being themselves, right? Like they're not being the, like even Bruno, like BRV, I know, I've yeah. always thought of as like an alter ego almost because people just see the perception of it, right? Like nobody knows me. Yeah. They see the videos, they see the posts, they see like the cars, whatever, and they make assumptions. But the people who know like Bruno, it's different, you know? Yeah. So you got to put something out there that people can grab at because you got the platform, yeah. especially you go out there, like win your next fight. Like those, that next interview, bro, is like the biggest platform you ever have. Yeah, and that's Every, immediately where, like, if you watch wrestling, like, yeah. like not the good wrestling that yeah. you did, but, like, yeah. the wrestle, wrestling. Yeah, bro. Wrestling. It's kind of <laughs> like that, though. Yeah, you take on you that know? alter ego. And, like, that's how I, I think it's Madonna. That, yeah. That she has people treat her like a diva hours before she does shows and, like, treat her like a diva, acts like a diva, changes her whole entire personality. So she can that's still... That's crazy. Maybe, and I don't know if it's Madonna. I could be mixing up yeah. the artist completely. But she could still be this humble person on a day-to-day -day life, but... When she goes out there, she could perform to the fullest, taking on this alter ego. So it's yeah. like that was kind of something that I was thinking about doing too. Is just, you know, like uh, being maybe that not so confident person that I am on a daily basis, yeah. but the week of the fight is just take on a different personality and just try to be something that I've never really believed I was. Right. In. And it's just like change that mind state. It's like I'm not myself yeah. when I'm fighting, you know. And it's like you hear people say that all the time. So well, like, I would I would say the personality from the outside looking in, you know, because you're always going to be so self critical. But dude, if you look at some of the shit you've been doing, like some of the highlights, like you know, you deserve to say whatever you feel like you should say. You know yeah. what I'm like? That's your platform. 
for sure. Like I thought when you called, uh, cause I was doing like my little, you know, research watching some videos. So after your last fight, like your post fight interview, uh, you called like Figueroa, like a douchey looking dude, you know, yeah. or he was like, he just looks like a fucking douche. So fuck yeah. I want to beat his ass. And I was like, <laughs> Like, yeah, like, that's exactly how I would feel. I'd be like this, yeah. you know, yeah, and some, they're like, oh, Brandon is a nice kid. But, you know, he's just like such a nice looking kid. It's yeah. different. It's hard to be mad at like, you know. Yeah. Some people are way easier to fight than others yeah. where it's like you see somebody on their like social media or you see like, you know, we have mutual friends and stuff like that. I can see him being a good father and stuff. Or it's like, <laughs> I do. F- Figgy, Figgy <laughs> almost is always his alter ego. So it's like you can kind of hate on that guy, yeah. which is like, you know, it's kind of it's kind of cool, too. So it's like. You know, I, I ran into Figgy in real life, and yeah. he was being nothing but pleasant, smiled at yeah. me and all that stuff. But it's like when he's on video and doing all this stuff, you're like, God, this guy's cringy as shit. Yeah, and it's like man. I don't like, you know. And so it's like you want to fight yeah. him, but it's at the same time, like maybe he's doing what he has to do to be a champion. And it's right. like may, maybe that's a little bit of the mind state I need to change. Is I, I need to be a little bit different in my head and be more confident in my head, yeah. uh, at least when I'm raw dog or quote yeah, unquote. You know right. what I'm saying? Not that I've done yeah. that yet, but it's like. But you should. I feel like that would be the easiest thing to like encapsulate, right? Because even that brand or that name comes with those memories yeah. right of you like even at the gym like shut the fuck up you're talking to the number four flyway in the world bitch like yeah, yeah. you're joking on the ego like even in that moment yeah and he knows because y'all are boys yeah but it's like fuck yeah i am the number four. <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it's like so easy because it comes with those memories you know yeah and it, it just comes with all that like because also when i think of like wrestling i think of like college days and your boy was just reckless right like reckless days of just you know, bro, especially in college, you walk around, like, you got your whole team with you. Everybody wants beef or everybody wants drama, right? It's like you're the toughest dudes in the school. You're on the newspaper every single day, right? So there was always this kind of, like, persona I would play, even at, like, parties of just, like, what's the wildest thing I could say or do? Or That's why when we were talking about that Kanye stuff, it's like I've played that game of, like, how far can I get away with yeah. my words? You and, then, know? and you're tapping pe- into people's emotions, and it's like yeah. it, it, uh, I was I was hearing this is like if you're not if you're not a fan of fighting, then the next thing you're gonna do is is root for someone that makes you feel emotional in a good way or yeah. a bad way. It's like you could root against them or, or nothing, but you're buying stake into the fight. And it's yeah. like if I can tap into someone's emotions or like in, into someone's emotions before I'm fighting in a good way or a bad way, then yeah. it's like I, I pretty much have somebody tuning in every time I fight, and yeah. that's really what's important. And you the, see that with the Jake Paul shit too. Yeah, like, Jake right? Paul. Everybody hates him, and it's just like you want to see the fight, right? You're kind of trying to see him and Anderson Silva, I guess, to some degree, right? Yeah, and that's what, like, for me, it's like, I love, I, I'll watch UFC all day, every day. Yeah. But if there's a street fight, if, if UFC's going on, there's two champions, and then there's a street fight going on right here, I'm looking this way every time. Yeah, like, bro, I gotta, absolutely. I gotta watch the craziness of somebody's baby's mama is with somebody. You know what I'm yeah, I got, I got, I, Hair pulling and yeah, all that. Uh, part of me is in the UFC because I watch Maury all day. Yeah, dude, <laughs> absolutely. Well, hey, bro, um, I just want to thank you for being on man it's been oh, so yeah. fun uh hopefully i get to have you on after you get this next fight too bro get another dub you know uh guys i really do think you'll be seeing brandon holding a belt very soon he's definitely up there as a contender uh you know 2023 is the year of the raw dog bro so yeah. let's just keep that same energy yeah try to keep the same energy the same mentality man i appreciate you having me on too man it's been fun. Right. thank you bro all right we'll catch you guys on the next one peace